Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about simultaneous measurability. So what could that possibly mean? Well, measurability is concerned with self-adjoint operators. They model observables in quantum mechanics. We make a measurement in a given state and we get an eigenvalue of that particular observable. And immediately after the measurement, the state becomes the eigenstate corresponding to that eigenvalue that was measured. Suppose we measure A and then B right afterwards. What are we going to get? Well, how do I know? Well, suppose that A and B have a common orthonormal basis of eigenvectors, and that's what we're concerned with in this section. So we measure A, we get an eigenvalue, the state becomes the eigenstate corresponding to that eigenvalue. We measure B, we know exactly what we're going to get, because we know that if it's an eigenstate, it's going to be the eigenvalue corresponding to that state. So what we would like to find are necessary and sufficient conditions for which A and B, two self-adjoint operators, they're going to be finite dimensional in this case because I'm actually going to have a proof of the result. Two self-adjoint operators on a complex inner product space, conditions for which they have a joint orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. That is, a single basis of eigenvectors that are eigenvectors um, for both A and B. And the necessary and sufficient condition is for those two operators to commute. And we saw the comm commutator in the last section. Okay, so that's something that's easy to determine. Thinking back to the last lecture, X and P do not have a common set of orthonormal bases of eigenvectors, but other observables may. And this is going to play a big role when we study angular momentum in the final chapter. Now, just because a set of eigenvectors is common to both A and B, that doesn't mean they have the same eigenvalues. All right, so the proof, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but it's two parts, it's an if and only if. So if A and B have a common set of common set of eigenvectors that form an orthonormal basis, they have to commute. That is an easy calculation. We, so we assume that's true, and then we conclude that they have to commute. Now, so it's a, I include the calculation here. It's, uh, I mean, you need to read the details behind it, but it's actually, it's, it's a somewhat instructive calculation. Now, suppose that A and B commute. Then the idea is to construct a set of eigenvectors. We know A individually has a, an orthonormal basis, and B individually has an orthonormal basis, but we want to construct things so that they're the same. That's a bit detailed. We start with the non-degenerate case first, and we go to the degenerate case. Not As usual, non-degenerate case is not too difficult. The degenerate case is a bit involved. Again, I am not, I'm, I don't want to go for the details. It's not the type of proof theorem that, it's not the type of theorem that I would examine you on the proof, um, but we're going to use it quite a bit. So, I'll stop there for today. Now we've seen two examples, we, we've seen, uh, that's the first big example how commutators are used. Next, we're going to consider uncertainty relations and commutators will play a big role in our consideration of uncertainty relations. So, 
until next time. Bye.